Welcome to today's MCC service. Most of you will be watching this in small groups, but welcome to individual watches as well. I want to start today with a prayer based on Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, which read, Jesus, as I run the race today, I fix my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith. Jesus, as I run the race today, I fix my eyes on you, the author and perfecter of my faith. I have titled this message, Running Today's Race. This morning, as we gather together in homes all around West Auckland, I want to look at some of the prayers we pray, the songs we sing, the verses we read, and the things we do with the people we do them with, and take some time to ponder together on the things that really do draw us closer to God. Do we actually believe these words we say and sing and share? Do we know how to have God's joy in our lives? I'm going to share some thoughts and then the video will be paused at three different places so that our discussion questions and activities are part of the message. The first break will give groups time to share some music together and the second and third will have time for sharing verses and for sharing the things that bring us joy. Your house church can take a short or a long time on each of these activities. This is the second message of 2022. This time in 2021, we were looking forward, hopefully, to a year free of COVID and COVID restrictions. But this year, after a longer lockdown than any of us thought possible, we are in a different space. We have better tools to tackle COVID, but the uncertainty remains, and I think was aptly expressed by my eight-year-old Sydney granddaughter. I had just asked her if she was excited because this was her last day of learning from home, and she replied, until next year's lockdown. I'm sure no one had suggested such a thing to her, but she figured that for two of her three years at school, lockdowns and learning from home had dominated, and this pattern would continue. It was hard to argue with her, and the truth is, we haven't the faintest idea what this year is going to look like. And that is a very uncomfortable place. In that uncomfortable place, can we run today's race with our eyes fixed on Jesus, trusting that he is the author and perfecter of our faith? Reading the first verses of Hebrews 12 again. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author or pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. As we face a year filled with uncertainty, are we prepared to trust Jesus, who both begins and finishes our faith? Can I walk with him, accepting that he is the author of my life story and that the author has the right to write that story as he will? And even more specifically, what tools are helping us to run this race today? I want to start with songs. A few weeks ago, Alana and her team used through three beautiful songs at the start of the service. We were still in level three lockdown and I thought they were very brave choices. We were choosing to sit or stand together in our homes and sing and think about these amazing words and amazing claims about our God. The songs were, I will raise a hallelujah. Death is defeated, the king is alive. 
And the second one, only a holy God. Who else commands all the hosts of heaven? Who else could make every king bow down? Who else can whisper and darkness trembles? Only a holy God. And they finished with enough by Duma. I am not what I make. I am who you have made me to be. I am not what I've done. I am loved unconditionally. I am not loved by the measure of love that I bring. I am not who I know. I am known by the King of all kings. Jesus, you are enough. Jesus, you are enough for me. If we take the words of just one of these beautiful songs and try to live as if they are true and we believe them. This will encourage us in this year of uncertainty. We can stand together and declare, death is defeated, the King is alive. For our first activity today, listen to at least one of these songs on someone's device, and then talk about which songs help you refocus on a God who loves us, especially in times of uncertainty. If you have time, use some of your own songs and share with each other which parts of them are special to you. Thank you. Did everyone have time to share something? My second tool today is the Bible, or more specifically, what we read in it. I am always still thinking about Christmas after Christmas, or Easter after Easter, and I really like the way this year that Chris reminded us that although we celebrate the coming of Jesus at Christmas, the important message is that he has already come. And this is what our songs were celebrating. Psalm 95 says, For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. Hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus came, the Israelites were singing their songs about a great God. And many of our modern songs are based on verses from the Bible, many of which come from Psalms, the songbook of the Israelites. If, but if we want to use God's word to strengthen us this year, we have to read it, or listen to it, or sing it, or paint it, and make connections between it and our lives now. When the angel came to Mary to tell her that she would have a baby Jesus, he also told her in Luke chapter 1, he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and his kingdom will never end. Pretty scary words to a new teenage mum. In a world where rulers come and go, where government leaders rise and fall, it can be hard to even imagine what this could look like. Isaiah prophesies about a king whose great government and peace will be endless. He will reign forever and bring peace to the world with no pain, no death and no tears. This seems like a distant dream in a world of COVID disruption and poverty. But this is our God. This is the God we trust and the God who loves us. Each morning for the last few months I have been reading Joshua 1.9 which hangs on my bedroom wall and is currently hanging behind me. It reads, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. There have been so many opportunities to be fearful, afraid and discouraged. 
This verse has helped me choose to not fear and not be discouraged. Our God will be with us wherever we go. For our second activity, what verse or verses encourage you? And where do you keep those verses so that you remember to take notice of them? The last part of the Christmas story that I wanted to ponder on today is in Luke 2. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Have you ever stopped to think about who these shepherds were? They were the nobodies, definitely on minimum wages and without any professional privileges, often unclean in the eyes of their fellow Jews because of the work they did. And yet, these were the only people that God sent angels to on the night his son was born. He didn't send angels rushing around to make a huge party. He went to one small, special group of shepherds. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. The two most important messages from the angels, do not be afraid and there will be great joy for all the people. We are part of all the people and that message about great joy includes us. How did it impact the shepherds? The angels made a huge effort to tell us about this joy and the verses that we read from Hebrews 12 at the beginning of this message remind us that for the joy set before him, Jesus endured the cross. This is a remarkable kind of joy, joy that makes even a cross worthwhile. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. The shepherds got up and went to visit this new baby Jesus. I'm sure they stopped and worshipped him and let him change their hearts or maybe their whole lives. We are told that on the way back, everyone was amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But then they returned to their sheep. They went back to their ordinary everyday tasks with that message of great joy ringing through their minds. Easy superficial joy? No. The deep joy that comes from God when times are so difficult. Fears and losses matter to God. Your whole life with its suffering is there to be enjoyed. God's kind of joy is that deep joy that comes with tears, because the Lord our God will be with us wherever we go. He walks the road, both ahead of us and with us. And our job, like the shepherds, is to return to our tasks with joy. What are your tasks in this year of 2022? <clears throat> Early in December this last year, there was an amazing comment on the BBC News about joy coming out of Germany. It said that Angela Merkel, 
who had led Germany for a historic 16 years as leader and arguably as one of the best world leaders across that stretch of time, turned to her successor after he was sworn in and told him to approach the task with joy. I'll say it again, approach the task with joy, then you will be able to carry the responsibility of leading your country. Whether we are shepherds or world leaders, we have tasks to do this year, which we need to approach with joy. Because death is defeated and the king is alive. We are not alone. In your groups for activity three, take time to ponder who or what draws you closer to God and what are the tasks you face this year. Maybe draw pictures this time to share with each other. I'm going to close with a prayer, but take as long as your group wishes to do this activity. Jesus, as we run the race today, we fix our eyes on you together. And we thank you that we can meet together again and encourage one another. We thank you that death is defeated the King is alive. We thank you that for the joy set before you, you endured the cross. And we thank you that you, Jesus, are enough for us. Amen. <laughs>